morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming. It's, I'm really excited about this because uh, we haven't done a session like this before. We've got some fascinating people. My name is John Foster Pedley. I'm the Dean and Director of Henley Business School in Africa. This is a morning about leadership, new forms of leadership in Africa. What are we going to be doing? My co-host, Raul Dunel, who's the chair of the Africa Sustainability Summit. We've got the, the tech guru, Stafford Macy. <laughs> ran Google in Africa. Joseph Jurassi runs a fantastic school called Red Hill and has worked uh, around the world and is an education provocateur and innovator. Next to him is John Flismus. John Flismus, who is known to most of us on TV, etc. Known for his comedy mainly, and he's a real social commentator as well. So enough of me, and over to Raldu. Maybe you make the introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. The African Sustainability Summit uh, the summit was founded with industry for industry in 2012 and the focus of the summit is to actually enable uh, and drive the implementation of global sustainable development goals in South African contexts and if you're really distilling it down it's to assist with driving inclusive growth um, across the value chains that we are operating in. The essence of the, the deep dive event um, is to be able to start thinking about leaders of a future world. If we talk about the future leadership in South Africa and Africa uh, we are going to be co-creating it as leaders today. From a leadership perspective, I think every single one of you understand that the world's changing. As much as it is about technology today, as leaders, you need to understand it's more about humanity. What we need to focus on today is not technology. We need to just accept that the transversality of it exists. It is prolific, it is democratized, it's easy to gain access to it. In fact, technology is so prolific that you as enterprises can't keep up with technology. And when everyone has it, you know what you have to focus on as a leader? It's not technology. You've got to focus on the construct of what makes humanity human. Because if you don't understand that, your business will die. The tectonic shift because of technology today is that humanity has an opportunity and it has platforms to express its humanity in ways that even it doesn't understand. The most valuable companies in the world today are not companies that make great things only. They have architectures of participation. Because of technology, people are enabled on the outside, exponentially, to add value to your organization. That's sustainability. You've got to realize that people can make your business better, not you alone. Education was developed because of the Industrial Revolution. Now, in the Industrial Revolution, to have 40 kids in a classroom was not a problem because of the way education was taking place. We were not teaching children how to explore. We were not asking them to converse. We were not asking them to think because nobody in the Industrial Revolution needed you to learn how to think. They were people who thought for you, okay? Your job was to get into what we called a labor economy. You were taught how to do certain things. Don't think outside of the box. Just get what we need you to be able to do. Don Dewey said this in the 1850s, that we have to replicate what we do in the schools for our societies. He goes on to say that a child needs to learn what the society needs. Because education is about getting people ready for that society. What he didn't realize is that we can't only get our children ready for the society that they exist in today, because the advent of technology has ensured that tomorrow it changes. So we are trying to educate children to become things that in five years time won't exist anymore. So what shall I do? You often attend these talks looking for answers and I'm gonna encourage you to stop that. Stop looking outside yourself because that's the first problem. You want someone else to provide your, your solutions. That's why we have the situation that happened at midnight last night. Because we are shit. We are the doom generation. Okay? We go to a church where we allow a man to spray us in the face with doom and then we blame him. <laughs> okay. It's amusing. But the truth is that is the major problem in this country. We are just talking earlier about what's going to happen. Well, that's because we don't know because we're not going to take the, the driver's seat. Just be aware of the fact that whatever solutions you are going to find are going to come from you, not from someone else, okay? When you saw a president that had to be taken out of jail on 247 fraud charges and you made him president, and this morning you're saying, but he's a crook. Yes, that's what he is. That's where we found him and that's what he is. It's your fault, not his, okay? You've allowed that to happen in your own country. Pay attention, go against the grain and do something. The world has become a VUCA world. And those of you in business know the terminology, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. What are you doing to actually make sure that your company is one of those top companies? 
Do you have agile leadership? Now, if we want our schools to change, you as the business world need to be able to say, these are the people that we need, but you've got to make the changes. Unless you put pressure on the government to change the CAPS curriculum and the examination that asks for the facts, our world is not going to change. I believe it's only when business and schools start to meet together to talk about the needs of business, what schools should be doing, how do you prepare them for what we need, what are we doing with your children, have you changed your workspace so that millennials are comfortable in your space, then we will start to make the progress. We live in an age now where it's not institutional content creation. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. It's end user generated content. The most valuable companies in the world today are what? Let's take Facebook. If you took all our stuff out of Facebook, what would Facebook be? If you took all our tweets out of Twitter, what would Twitter be? Do you know what killed Kodak? It was the ability for me, no matter how bad my camera was <laughs> on my phone, to take a picture of somebody and put that picture on a social media platform. No matter how grainy it was, you know what I valued more? It was the ability for someone to click the like button next to it. Why? Because that spoke to what? Me. Kodak focused so much on product excellence that they forgot that we value our humanity being expressed more. The responsibility that you have now is exponentially more focusing on your constituents, on the humanity on the outside of your business. You need to build ecosystems. You don't build products and services only. Clever people are taught to build walls. That is how you've been taught. It's all about the Industrial Revolution. You have to build a wall and you have to amass things within your wall. And whether it's at business, that's vertical integration. Grab what you can, acquisition, use your muscle, leverage, beat, acquire. Like that's exactly the same system as Cecil John Rhodes. And by the way, Rhodes Must Fall is a fantastic academic idea. You just don't hear it because you see black people getting angry and immediately say, oh, they're breaking things and burning books. What they are saying is finally, finally, there's a group of young academics who've come up with a, with a great uh, answer to colonialism. And instead of listening to what they have to say, we're now writing them off. The man who wrote, who didn't give the waitress the tip, we turned that into the greatest single confirmation that white privilege exists by paying the waitress 150,000 rand when she was done out of a voluntary 50 rand donation. Don't be scared of destruction. It is a very creative act. When children burn shit, they are angry, and from those ashes, new things will rise. We don't need another Pierre Neef painting. What we need is a rising class of black academics who are going to sort the ANC out and fix this country, and you're not going to do it. They are, because it's their country, and it's their thoughts, and it's their original academic work that is going to write the new future of our country. Cognition is now the consequence of technology. The humanity bit's okay, but now you need to focus on, on what is the consequence of that humanity being expressed. We are cognifying everything. We are cognifying inanimate objects. We're making them smart, and through that smartness, we're creating a new revolution, and that revolution is a, is a revolution of cognition. It's injecting intelligence into so many things. The big, big jump is the Google Autonomous Driving Vehicle. It's when the blind guy gets into the car and says, take me to Taco Bell. As leaders, the greatest responsibility you have because of technology's proliferation is not it, it's humanity. We teach everyone, everyone, from school, at the team, play rugby, win, by all accounts, win. When you get the most A's, get the distinctions, your parents will help you, they will leverage the school, get the A's, get the degree, get the thing, why? Because they want to get all your stuff and build walls, and they want to put that stuff in the wall, form a trust, make a corporation, hide it from everyone else, protect yourself, ensure yourself, it's all about building walls. The problem with that is, once you build walls, you cannot see what's going on anymore. You lose track of what's going on. That's why we have privileged people and an army, an army of angry people in our country. They are furious and they have no direction. Be very careful because that's when revolution happens. And a revolution doesn't happen on the horizon. It happens right under your upturned nose. We are, we are now in an age where sharing economies are becoming fast and furious. People understand that it's okay to be human. It's okay to have enough. You don't have to cause these massive bubbles of acquisition. I did a show called The Good Racist and it got such an interesting response because people said to me, how can you call a show The Good Racist, especially in this environment? Because it's necessary. You have to take ownership of something before you can truly debate it. White people don't want to talk about racism because it's embarrassing. It's so evil. And yes, we did it. Historically, the facts are there. You can't hide that. Most black people that I spoke to in the research for the show, just, just give us like some kind of, just acknowledge something. So what happens is we call it dialogue on race. It's not. It's an argument based on I'm not culpable. That, that's what we are really saying. 
And I'm speaking specifically to white people because I'm one of you. And I think it's important to own that. I can't speak on behalf of black people because the truth is I never went through that. So it's presumptuous of me to decide what black people do. Oh, don't you want to get over it now? Hasn't, how long has it been? <laughs> when my black friends stop flinching when a dog walks into the room, then we can talk about <laughs> this deep shit here. You've got to really understand that and get involved and stop trying to like manage the blame and get into the actual conversation. We waste a lot of brain power with prejudice. We are taught generally to use prejudice to define things and that's how we learn is by learning the differences. Stop it. You've heard about empathy today. Learn yourself. Stop drinking cappuccino and spitting froth at other people. Understand your own prejudice. Analyze them fearlessly. And once you decode that stuff, you have decoded the majority of other people. That's what I really want to say today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Mm. Wow, well, I don't know about you, but I don't think I've sat through a panel like this for, I can't remember how long. That was a mind-blowing stuff, fantastic. It's been an inspiration to be with you all and to be with you. Thank you so much indeed, and I hope you come again. Thank you very much. Thanks for hosting us.